lowering heart failure readmission rates is a huge issue and one which is being mandated federally. Lowering readmission rates uh, correlates with improved patient prognosis and lower cost to the healthcare system. Now, we did a cover story on this in Cardiosos World News about a year ago. We've gotten letters from and emails from readers going, can we have more information on lowering hospital rehospitalization? Ta-da. We have today Dr. Scott Solomon, who is an MD and a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and the director of non-invasive cardiology at Brigham and Women's Hospital. And we're talking about reduction in 30-day rehospitalization after discharge from a heart, heart failure admission in patients receiving LCZ-696 versus an allopril. This is Paradigm HF. Now, the last time we talked about this was, I think, overseas in an ESC meeting. Remind us, before we talk about the presentation here, Paradigm HF. Sure. So talk about it. So uh, Paradigm, as you know, was a, uh, the largest heart failure trial ever done, 8,400 patient heart failure trial comparing Secubitril Valsartan, also known as LCZ-696, also known as Entresto now in the United States, uh, to uh, the state-of-the-art uh, care enalapril in patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction. And uh, we saw, as we discussed uh, over a year ago, a 20% reduction in the combined endpoint of cardiovascular death or heart failure hospitalization, uh, a 21% reduction in heart failure hospitalizations, and a 16% reduction in mortality. We also now have been doing lots of secondary analyses in Paradigm. And as you mentioned, one of the most important things that we're interested in is uh, keeping patients out of the hospital. Right. Uh, and uh, as you know, when a patient is admitted to the hospital with heart failure and then discharged, they're at very high risk of coming back to the hospital. Quickly, too. Not just yes, very quickly, within 30 days. And in fact, as you mentioned, in the United States, this is a key metric for us. And hospitals are actually put at financial risk if a patient comes back to the hospital for any reason right. within 30 days of a heart failure hospitalization. So what we did is we looked at the paradigm data and we looked at patients who were admitted to the hospital and we know that fewer people came into the hospital uh, for heart failure or for any reason uh, if they were in the LCZ-696 Secubitril Valsartan group compared to the Enalapo group. But what we did is we looked at uh, once they were discharged the likelihood that they would come back to the hospital within 30 days. And what did you find? Well, we found that if you were in the uh, uh, Secubitril Valsartan arm compared to the Enalapril arm, you had a 36% reduction. Uh, the 36% fewer patients were rehospitalized wow. within 30 days. This was uh, highly statistically significant for any reason by the way, not just heart failure. Right. In fact, when you look at heart failure, it's even more profound. There's a 44% highly significant reduction in returning to the hospital with a rehospitalization within 30 days. And what I thought was interesting is you analyzed this several different ways, including further adjustments for baseline characteristics, but bottom line was it did not alter these findings. That's exactly right. So we looked at this in a number of ways. We looked at uh, investigator reported heart failure hospitalizations, adjudicated heart failure hospitalizations, it's all very consistent. Obviously, drug therapy is now one way that we can reduce the rates. We're actually getting readers saying, talk more about the issue. What else can be done? What have you found to be successful in reducing rehospitalization rates? Well, keeping patients out of the hospital with heart failure is obviously uh, multifactorial. So getting them on the right medicines, I think, is, is, is crucial, but also having the support systems, um, having good discharge planning, having good opportunity for patients to uh, be able to visit with their doctor relatively quickly after discharge. These are all important. And when we take care of patients uh, and discharge them, the, we spend almost a half a day usually of just discharge planning, going over their medications, um, making sure that they have appointments, etc. And making sure that those appointments are coming up quickly. Are coming up quickly it, in Cap. You know, in the past, one of the, the problems was they weren't seeing a doctor for like 14 days and they were being readmitted yes. to day seven. Well, there's a real problem there. It's, it's, it's a very important problem. And also compliance with medications, making sure the regimen is simplified for the patient so that they can understand how to take their medicines. The, the track that uh, this particular agent went 
uh, through, it, it seemed to be awfully fast, LCZ 696. I mean, we talked about it in Europe, and it was like, it was one of the big stories out of that meeting, yeah. and it's now been approved. I mean, this thing was obviously fast-tracked, but still it seemed impressive. It was impressive. It was improved in under a year, and I think that speaks to the strength of the evidence from the Paradigm uh, trial. It's now been approved since uh, early July in the United States. It's about to be approved in Europe. It's approved in about seven other countries as well, and so uh, as well, and we're now getting a chance to actually use this drug in our patients. And I should mention the fact that if you want more on this, about uh, the December 14th issue of Jack Heart Failure, Dr. Solomon was co-author of a paper on the, com I was a state-of-the-art review on combined neprilysin and renin angiotensin system inhibition for the treatment of heart failure. So please check that. The citation will be on board here very quickly. As soon as I say, I'm Rick McGuire, Executive Editor, CardioSource World News.